What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards and Comics here. Today, I have a little chat about what card shows. I mean, we're basically kind of talking about the national and whatever Fanatics events is going to be, but like the mega shows, the tent pool events. If you want to throw Burbank into this a little bit, I think that one's on the edge and heading in that direction. Maybe the Dallas show. What those shows can steal from comic conventions, uh, specifically New York Comic Con. I have, so just kind of lay things out here. Uh, on a big show scale, I have been to the National on the sports card side of things. I have been to New York Comic Con on the comic book side of things. And I've also attended a Gen Con. I've been to New York Comic Con twice, the National three times. I have not attended Dallas. I have not attended Burbank. Uh, so that's just give you a little background on where I'm at. I've gone to like Atlanta Culture Collision, uh, the Philly show, stuff like that. And I've gone to Heroes Con, kind of a, a larger scale, but not on like the mega scale of Comic Cons. And, you know, you go to all these things and there's, you know, there's some common themes among all of them. But there are some things, I think, specifically that Comic Cons just do a little bit better than, a, than the card show. And what it is... They make it more of an experiential weekend. Uh, the national, you know, any of these things, it, there's always going to be a social aspect to it. So you can remove that. The national specifically is very much focused on the cards. And if that's what that show always wants to be, then more power to it. But I think there are some small things that they could tweak and add just to kind of make it a little bit more of an enjoyable experience to attend. Um, you know, Fanatics events is the elephant in the room. I have a feeling Fanatics events is going to scratch this itch of crossing between uh, a traditional card show and a more comic con style of show. If you've never attended one of these ultra large comic cons, the real big difference is the non, well, two things. The first being non-show floor activities. There are way more panels and side events that are put on by the con that aren't taking place on the main show floor. That could be panels, uh, that could be signing events, uh, mostly panels of varying shapes and sizes. I mean, you're talking panels that might have 40 people in it and panels that might have thousands of people in it. And I don't see why the national can't pull something like this off. Now, so they do have a stage at the national. I have a feeling fanatics events will lean into this hard uh, because it is kind of a staple of a comic con style event. I know like CGC last year, they had some like little mini teeny, teeny, tiny panels uh, at their booth. But I think there should be a more of a concerted effort for this. I get you don't want people leaving the show floor, but there is, I don't care how much you love cards. There's only so many hours in a day that you can walk around and look at tables all day long. I think there is areas of opportunity to pull people into a side room. Want to just, hey, it'd be a good excuse just to go sit down for like an hour uh, and get some information. You know, Comic cons, it's it's traditionally like movie announcements, trailers, uh, things like that. Sure, we don't have that on the sports card side, but they're they're one hundred percent should be a tent pole panel or panels from all the major grading companies. Think Marvel Hall H at San Diego Comic Con, where they kind of come out and give a state of the union for lack of a better term, where they kind of update us on, hey, here's the big things we have coming for you guys this year. So imagine Top Slash Fanatics coming out there and kind of laying out what product's going to look like for a year, some changes and tweaks that they have coming, how they're going to make one-on-ones. Uh, there's going to be five of them in every product instead of the three that we have now. Uh, you know, if they wanted to announce a new program like Top's MVP buyback, Whatever their next thing is for that, they can knock that out there. Ideally, they would have a Q&A session. Let's be honest, that would probably be heavily filtered. But even do like pre-submitted questions uh, and, and get a little spicy with them. Allow, allow a little bit of spice in the room 
on those ones and and field some questions, even if it's just for a couple minutes, and kind of lay everything out for everyone for the upcoming year on what things are going to look like, whatever fun, new, innovative things. It's a marketing opportunity for sure. There's no reason the grading company shouldn't have something similar. Uh, obviously, they wouldn't all be in the same panel, but like PSA should have a panel where the Nat and Ryan and whoever else is up there giving a little state of the union on PSA, where they're sitting, where they're looking at with pricing. Basically, you know, that IG video that uh, the PSA president did, Ryan, about a week ago or two weeks ago, where they kind of ran through a bunch of this stuff, literally that, you know, minus the box opening, do that as a panel at the national. Give us a state of the, the union. Where do you guys sit with PSA? How's orders flowing? Where do you see things going over the next few months? Talk about your new expansions, you know, use it as a marketing tool. And it also just opens up communication and builds a little bit of consumer confidence and kind of gives us a little bit of a peek behind the curtain. Even if it's a your narrative peek behind the curtain, it's still a peek behind the curtain. It gives us a chance to put faces to names and get to see who these people are and realize that they're actually real human beings. I think there is a lot of benefit to that, you know, and they don't all have to be these massive style panels from the big companies. You could do smaller ones. There could be a content creator panel. There could be a, you know, put all, put the owners of some major card shops up there. I know this is some stuff that the Mint out in Vegas has tried some of this stuff. And I've watched some of those panels. I thought they were pretty informative. You know, you should have something with uh, shop owners, you know, have a card shop panel that, you know, put, you know, card collector two up there and Rob from Burbank and, uh, Andy from Indie Card Exchange and, you know, whoever else you want to roll out there uh, and have them give a panel on like the trials and tribulations of running a shop in 2023 and, you know, things to keep in mind and you know, things to look out for. And if you want to get started, do X, Y, or Z thing or try this or, you know, how to manage social. You know, there should be stuff like that there. Ryan from Breakout Cards should be on a panel with, you know, maybe you get him, uh, someone from a grading company, one or two other experts and have something of, uh, you know, how to spot fakes. You know, here's an 86 Fleer Jordan. Here are the top five things to look out for. Here are some things to know about these popular vintage cards or what the a crash course on buying raw vintage. You know, that that that's your panel right there. A, a 45 minute crash course on how to buy vintage raw. Things to know, things to look out for. How should the card feel? How should it look? Obviously, there's a lot of nuance to it, but you could go over some of the high-level stuff and get industry experts up there. Like I said, get Ryan from Breakout Cards, get Andy from CGC or whoever, or Peter, or you know what, the head grader from somewhere. Maybe one of the grading companies wants to sponsor it, and, and they can put their head grader out there to, to give some tips and tricks. Those types of things. Like I said, you can have a content creator panel. Put uh, me and Dustin up there with a bunch of other people and, you know, how to start a YouTube journey, how to do YouTube content, how to do Instagram content, how to do X, Y, or Z thing, whatever the case might be. I think there is a large area of opportunity for that sort of stuff. And I do think that'll be something Fanatics events attacks. Now, you don't know how to roll all this stuff out. Maybe you don't do all every single one of these, but I do think there is an area or an area of opportunity at minimum for the larger scale companies to get out there and give us a little state of the union at the national specifically. Next, this is a simple one. Uh, Comic-Con, at least New York Comic-Con nails this. And I've seen some other places that nail this. And this is something I would really like to see the national specifically do. Now, I don't know where you would do it in Chicago. That would be the tricky part. I guess maybe underneath that loop where everyone drops off. I don't know. New York Comic Con had an entire area dedicated to food trucks, and it was fantastic. There was at least 10 or 15 of them all lined up that you could walk out of the convention floor and actually get some semi-decent food that was available right there on site. I am sure maybe it's some sort of agreement they have with the convention centers. I don't know. But there is no reason you should have to traipse all over the place to grab lunch or eat, let's be honest, very mediocre cafeteria food or a hot dog from a food stand or whatever. All these areas have probably tremendous food. There's tons of good food trucks out there in all the cities. 
organize something like that. So the Ship Shawana show can pull it off. If Brad can pull off having really good food trucks in the middle of nowhere, Indiana, I am sure you could figure out a way to get some food trucks at the Chicago National or wherever the National is going to be at in the future. But for the time being, it's going to be in Chicago for a while. Next year in Cleveland. Next year in Cleveland, I want to see a Swenson's food truck parked out front. If you know, you know. If you're from Northeast Ohio, you know what I'm talking about. I want a Swenson's food truck at the National next year. I want to be able to, especially there, because the there is nowhere, you can't just walk across the street. At least in Chicago, there is a bunch of options for that. But that's just a little convenience of life thing. You know, I know the Ludex guys do a, a great job with the VIP booth, but that's still limited access to that. There's still only so much space in there. I would love to see a food truck set up. If Shipshawana can do it, the National can do it. Brad kills it with food trucks at his show. Simple little thing. Get on it. Get on it. Now, this one might be a little bit of a hot take. I don't know how people are going to feel about this. The National is, you know, a sports card show. Fanatics events, I think, is going to lean into pop culture a little bit more. And I think it would be smart for the National to start to do that. And how you do that is the autograph signers. Now, maybe this is just a TriStar thing. I don't know. I don't know the inner workings of all that. But it would be nice to see a little bit of blend or a little bit of crossover with some pop culture stuff. Maybe get a couple actors in there, someone local to, local to wherever the show is, whatever the case might be. I don't know if you want to get into artists and stuff like that, you know, but I, I think it would be at least worth flirting around the edges of that. Let's be honest, everybody. Non-sports cards specifically are becoming a larger and larger part of the national every single year. You see more and more on the show floor, whether it's Pokemon, Star Wars, Marvel, whatever the case might, whatever the hot thing is at the time. That stuff is starting to work its way into the National. I think it would be smart if the National worked some of that stuff into their autograph offerings. They don't have to go crazy. You know, just maybe pull one or two, three people. See how it goes for a year. See what the response is like. You know, pick out a couple big names or whoever you could get. Uh, whoever's popular at the time, you know, depending on what shows or movies or whatever is out. But non-sports cards are becoming a bigger deal. And I think it wouldn't be the worst idea to pull some of that stuff in. On the athlete side, they do a, they do a great job. The list for the athlete side is always amazing. Uh, I got no complaints there. But I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit of a sneak into the pop culture side of things. Because, like I said, I believe that is something that Ruben and Fanatics events will go after. Uh, they, I think they are going to attack that space. I think you are going to see a lot more crossover on the non-sports side uh, of various different shapes and sizes working their way into the experience slash autograph side of things. Now, Comic-Con, trade night is not a thing at Comic-Con, at least not that I have seen. Uh, so the one thing that the National does good there is the organized trade night. That being said, they should expand that. Let's be honest, once again, especially next year in Cleveland, but just in general, there should be more after hours activities centered around the show. There should be an official trade night every single night of the show. If people want, if people don't want to go to it, they get sick of it, perfectly fine. But every single night of the show, there should be an official trade night. And there should be, and it should be fully supported, there should be ancillary meetups slash events. For example... I know that there's always a, a big F1 trade night that gets semi-organized. And there was some weird stuff around a lot of these ancillary ones this year. I don't really know what was true and what wasn't in regards to the National giving them the stink eye or not. Don't know. Whatever the case is, going forward, the National should reach out. There should be, Or there should be a way that you can connect with the National and team up with them and say, hey, we are doing an F1 trade night. It's after hours. We're doing it at the Hilton Garden, whatever, whatever, ballroom C. Help them promote that. That is a value add. Even though if they're not in your show floor spending money, it is a value add to get people to attend the show. The more things you could tack on, even if they, you know, if you're listening to this video and you're like, I would never go to that, cool. Guess what? It's not for you. Perfectly fine. But there are some people that probably look at that and go, oh, you know what? 
that would be really cool. And you start tacking on all these little value add things that are addition to the actual show itself. And it convinces more people to attend these things. So even if you're pulling 1% of the income off the show floor into these ancillary things, because people are spending fractions of minutes less on the show floor, and most of the stuff would be, uh, you know, the trade nights and stuff would be after hours. Anyways, panels would be during the show floor. It's a net positive in the long run because you could get more attendees because of it, because people see the value of traveling to the show more. Oh, I'm going to travel to the show and just look at cards for three straight days or an entire day. Cool. For a lot of people, that's great. A lot of people might look at that and go, eh, whatever. But now you start adding on these other little teeny tiny things here and there. Those are all value adds that really, you know, if you're helping get the word out for an F1 trade night or a vintage trade night or an 80s baseball trade night at a hotel lobby somewhere, I, I mean, really, what are you doing? You're including it in an email newsletter or maybe an Instagram post. It's not costing you anything. But maybe those couple little extra things pull some more bodies to the show. And once again, it's not really costing you anything as the national or whoever's putting the show on if you want to expand this out beyond that. Picking on the national here a little bit because they're the they're the main player in the room for right now until we see what Fanatics Events does. So more after hours activities sponsored by or helped or pushed, whatever you want to call it, by the show itself. Have the official trade nights. Guess what? It's okay if you have the Card Collector 2 trade night on a Thursday night and on the same night, maybe at an overlapping time, there's an F1 trade night going on or a Magic the Gathering trade night or a Pokemon trade night or a 90s basketball trade night. Theme these things, you know? It's perfectly okay to do stuff like that. People will figure it out. People that want to be at the individual events, you're going to miss some stuff. You're never going to be able to see everything. But spread this stuff out over the course of the week. And once again, especially next year in Cleveland, very specifically, there should be a trade night, an official trade night every single night. Part of that is, is because of the location, everyone's all spread out. Uh, and it's going to be important to have a centralized location to get to. Chicago, that's less of a big deal. But even Chicago, Chicago should 100% have a trade night every single night of the week. There is no reason why we should have to take over hotel lobbies and cause chaos in the hotels. That's all I have for you, boys and girls. If you have attended some of these large Comic Cons and some of the large card shows, and you have something you think they should steal, pillage, plunder from a Comic Con, leave it in the comments down below. Anything I missed, anything that particularly struck a nerve with you, good, bad, or indifferent. Like I said, all this stuff is not going to be for every single person. If you want to go to the National and you want to walk up and down rows and kill your back and just look at showcases, for three straight days, more power to you. Guess what? If they do any of this other ancillary stuff, it's not going to change that. You're still going to be able to go do it. But by adding this other stuff on, which is a low-cost effort in most cases, the most expensive thing would be official trade nights every night because you'd have to get the space and whatever that entails. I'm sure that is not cheap. So that one, I get it. But for most of this other stuff, you know, putting a panel on, I I'm, trust me, I'm sure you could probably get people to sponsor the panel, whatever company that wants the space. So that's all I got. We will catch you boys and girls on the next one. Probably a Comic-Con pickups video. Bought a bunch of cool stuff, uh, fun stuff, had some fun experiences. Uh, so I need to go over that at some point in time. Uh, we'll see when that gets up. We'll catch you on that one. Peace.